Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the device behind me now. We're about to pull this apart. It's a bit sad, really. It's been going for many, many years. Um, this is a film recorder that my brother and I uh, built. Uh, the first generation of this has been built a few times, but the first generation of this was built in 1998, from memory. Uh, and it was used to record, to, to start with uh, commercials, but then eventually as it graduated to titles and credits for feature films, special effects for feature films, and then the whole DI digital interim process of recording entire feature films. And it was very, very high speed for its day. We could actually record an entire feature film uh, within uh, three or four days. Um, let's have a closer look. Now to start with, you'll notice this, this is actually quite large. The uh, traditional um, single cathode ray tube with colour wheels were quite small units. Um, what we did was we increased the size of everything to make it easier to get the optics right and the mechanics right. Similar to uh, Lucas working with VistaVision film. So we blew everything up to make everything easier to, to, to use. So if you come in and look at this unit, uh, it's an LCD now, it was a CRT originally. First you've got your display device. The display device is where we bring up the 2K image and we would emanate the light that would eventually uh, impregnate onto the 35mm film. Now you'll notice around the unit we actually have this metal cage. Um, the metal cage is uh, for a number of reasons. One is to make sure there's no dust or any uh, things that get in the way of the optical path. But um, the reason this is so thick is that back in the days when we used to use CRTs, we actually found that when a new uh, mobile phone uh, CDMA um, broadcasting process came in, the, rate, the waves from the, from the towers were actually affecting this, the cathode ray tube as it sent it from the back of the tube to the, to the CRT. Now clients noticed fortunately, but it took us a few months to work out what was causing the problem and then how to fix it. So we built this um, Faraday cage around the outside of the unit so that it would prevent any uh, interference from those, those transmissions. So our light would emanate to here and this is where we hit, get to the traditional, I'll just cross across here, uh, Oxbury camera. Here we have the Oxbury 35mm film head. Uh, this is actually a head from an, an original um, animation rostrum that would have gone up and down and recorded 35mm cells. It was repurposed for this application. We've got our 35mm magazine up top here, a traditional uh, Mitchell slash Oxbury version. Um, the film comes down through here into this mechanism here uh, where you will see through the stepper motor controls the film goes in and out of the the magazine but what we also have here is the the 35 millimeter gate the gate is what actually pin registers and holds the 35 millimeter film in place um, the thing about animation cameras or, or Oxbury and Mitchell cameras is they use multiple pins to actually hold the 35 mil in place it makes it very very stable the film goes up through the other half of the mechanism and then comes out here to the feeder, uh, to the pickup, which would pick up the 35mm film. So basically, every second, one frame would be recorded, one frame would be recorded, one frame would be recorded. The back here to control everything, we have a, a stepper motor, uh, we have a stepper motor controller unit here that actually uh, controls it just as it would a um, motion control rig or something of that ilk. And we also build a purpose built box so we can keep count of how many frames we've used, how many frames we've recorded. So we could just uh, at a moment's notice, record three or four minutes or five minutes of a, of a credit roll or a short film or whatever, pull the uh, film off after it came out the end and we could send it off to the lab and still keep a, you know, half the roll here ready to record the next item. And then if you go back through here, you'll actually see the computer that was actually controlling this whole thing. Now, what we actually did in, uh, in the initial instance back in 1998, we didn't actually have a lot of storage back then. I think from memory we had like nine gigabytes. No, it would have been nine. Yeah, nine gigabytes of storage. We didn't have the ability to store literally the, the um, you know, 25 odd minutes of recording we would do uh, um, uh, for a run of commercials. So what we actually did is we um, interfaced the film recorder into a product called After Effects by Adobe. So what would happen is uh, when you ran After Effects that would generate a frame, rather than recording it onto 35mm film, and I think you'll find most people use After Effects for, for design rads and other commercial applications today, titles and credits as well, uh, it would actually print the, f the image 
to the film recorder directly. So a frame would come up and be generated inside the computer, it would be recorded onto 35mm film, the data would be thrown away and then we'd create the next frame after that. And that way we could actually generate um, you know, gigabytes and gigabytes of data um, and record it instantaneously rather than trying to store it anywhere. DCP Player Free. Get it now from digital.net.au.